Okay, let's go live. James Medic speaking. Um, I got a great video, another great video. If you're into creating how-to material, video tutorials, online courses, anything having to do with teaching and starting building growing education business. What I'm going to show you today, I'm actually going to show you another live demo of the Google Gemini, the AI engine version two. They just brought out uh, at the end of December, the multimodal input that we can have directly with an AI tool just by talking to the screen, either showing something in a live camera, a webcam, and or a screen. So this is a multimodal input. We're not just limited to text. We can have all of the different communication channels open and Gemini 2.0 actually can interact with that live. So Gemini 2.0 was just announced uh, middle of December and um, it's multimodal. That's the kind of key uh, phrase here. If you go, and I'll put the links here, uh, you can get a little bit more information on this. But the thing is that's really cool about this is it's live and interactive. So this opens up a whole kind of world of uh, different ways to create content that is about teaching. And what I did earlier in another video, in the previous one, is I was talking about, uh, let's take a look at a screen capture and interact live with the screen capture for a piece of software. And I was just basically asking questions about the software and Gemini was giving me the responses about where are menu choices? What are the different ways to do things? How do I use this? Which should I use? Or what are the options that I have? This one, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show um, that multimodal input. But what we're going to do is not look at a piece of software this time. What I want to do is I actually want to look at a video of a completely different thing. What is it? I'm going to show some pickleball. So uh, I've got a pickleball video that's on YouTube. Uh, hopefully I'm okay showing it. I'll find out soon enough <laughs> if, if I get flagged for whatever reason or how I can manage that. But for the time being, I'm going to be showing some people playing pickleball and I'm going to allow Gemini to work with me watching that actual sport being played. Now, I did it this way because some people said, well, you know, how can I use it for doing a physical task that isn't something that is on a screen like a piece of software? What if I am playing pickleball? What if I am trying to learn how to play a musical instrument? What if I am showing a particular task at work or a particular process of something that's done physically? So here's the example of how we're going to do it. So we've got the Gemini 2 experimental model that's here. And this comes into place. I want you to go take a look at that one, of course. But the other place to play around is this one called labs.google. And if you go there, you'll see there's one called experiments. Please go take a look at experiments because this has all of the cool stuff that's coming from Google. And where I got thinking about these things on how they relate to online courses and creating how-to and education material, there was a couple places, and I've done a couple videos on this, but the one that caught my eye was down in the bottom left, and you can take a look at these ones, but this one right here where I'm circling my mouse, conversational AI on YouTube, a new conversational tool on YouTube that answers questions about the video you're watching, recommends related content, and more. So this one isn't available yet, but this is something that's coming. So what I did is I said, you know what? Why don't we go take a look at the AI studio where I did that other video? And again, these links are all available for you. Just go to aistudio.google.com and you'll get this kind of playground that you can play around with. I went to here and I said, you know what? Let's go to that live st uh, stream real time part here on the left hand side and make sure that we've got the model is set to Gemini 2 flash experimental, which is the one that has that uh, multimodal input. So I said, why don't we go and we actually show a video here like on YouTube and see if we can interact with it. And that's what I'm doing right now. So while I'm doing this, I'm going to be asking some questions that someone would ask if they're trying to find out how to play pickleball or improve their game of pickleball. Um, they're watching someone that in this case is just playing. But if you were an instructor, you could just show yourself playing pickleball or demonstrating a particular task and record it. This one I'm showing doesn't even have any narration. It's just the actual people playing. So I'm going to have Gemini 2 interact live with me while it's watching that video. 
I'm going to ask it a series of questions so that you can see what kind of responses we get. And then I'd like you to kind of go, wow, that's cool. That's something I can do if I just record my video content. And when you think about it, you don't even have to tell what you're doing and vocalize it. Technically, you'd be able just to show it and have a tool like this explain or allow the AI tool to explain uh, what's going on. So what I'm going to do here, I've got the experimental flash set up here. I'm going to still pick share your screen. The next one I'll do is show uh, this show Gemini. I'll do the live video uh, in the next one. But this one is share your screen. And then I've got the pickleball video in the background. So I'm just going to share my screen and it's going to ask me which screen I want to pick. I'm going to pick a specific tab, which is the pickleball one here. You can see the pickleball players in the little picture. So I'm going to pick share. And when this comes up, that's the one we're sharing. But what I want to do is I want to interact while Gemini is watching this. So I've got the sound turned off. I'm just going to hit play and you can see that they start playing. And then we're going to go back here and I'm just going to say, hi, Gemini. Can you see the video? Sure. I see the pickleball video playing now. It looks like two teams of two are playing. Do you have any questions about the video? Yeah, sure. Can you just explain a little bit uh, about what's happening on the screen? Okay, sure. It's a pickleball game. Two teams of two players are on a court that's divided by a net. They're using paddles to hit a ball back and forth over the net. Does that help? Sure. So what are the different players doing uh, on the court? How are they moving? Why, why are they going back and forth? Sure. The players are moving around the court to position themselves for the next shot. They're also trying to hit the ball strategically to make it difficult for the other team to return. They go back and forth because it is how you play the game. What are some of the different rules being shown? The game starts with a serve, and players must let the ball bounce once on each side before volleying. Players can't stand in the no volley zone near the net and volley the ball. Is there anything else you'd like to know about the rules? What is the no volley zone? The no volley zone, also known as the kitchen, is the area near the net that extends from the net line to seven feet back. Players cannot volley the ball while standing in the no volley zone. Can you tell me about the different styles of the players? From what I see in the video, some of the players seem to be more aggressive, hitting the ball harder and moving quickly around the court. Other players seem more focused on making controlled shots and using strategy. Would you like me to focus on any player in particular? Sure, pick the player with the hat. Tell me about his game. Okay, the player with the hat seems to use a more strategic approach. He appears to be placing the ball carefully and not going for power shots as often as the others. He seems to be trying to control the game by making fewer unforced errors. Can you tell me a little bit about his foot placement while he's playing? Based on the previous clip, it appears the player with the hat is keeping his feet moving, taking small, quick steps to stay balanced and ready for the next shot. He also has a wide stance, which helps with stability. Would you like me to look at any other aspect of the game? Sure. Can you tell me a little bit about how uh, he serves? Okay, in this clip, the player serving stands behind the baseline and hits the ball underhand. The ball must land in the opposite diagonal service court. Is there anything else you would like to know? Yeah, how could he improve his serve? Well, from what I can see, he could try adding more spin to the ball, which can make it harder for the opponent to return. Also, he could work on varying the placement of his serve, which will help to keep his opponent guessing. Would you like me to provide additional information about how players can improve their game? I was wondering how you could get more spin on your serve. To get more spin on your serve, you can try to brush up on the back of the ball as you hit it with your paddle. You could also try to use a more open paddle face at contact. Do you have other questions for me? Yeah, so um, how could uh, the team that's closest to us, how are they playing together? Are they a good pair? It seems like they're playing well together. They're both moving into position and covering the court to keep their opponents from getting an easy point. They seem like a coordinated team. How could they improve their game? It looks like they could improve their communication. It seems that sometimes they aren't sure who's going for the ball. Also, they could work on their shot selection. They could try mixing up their shots more, 
rather than always playing it safe. Is there anything else I could help with? Yeah, how many serves has the man with the hat made so far? I see that the score is 6-4. to four. The team that includes the man with the hat has just finished their serve, so they have made four serves so far. Do you have any other questions about the game? How, how many serves have been successful for him? I can see that the team with the man with the hat has four points, so that would mean all four of his serves have been successful. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So I'm just going to disconnect uh, Gemini for now. And what I want to do is just kind of go over why I asked those questions. And again, those are questions I just came up with. It wasn't anything special other than the fact that I asked questions that were about different aspects of what was in the video. The last question was about statistics. So it knew what the score was, and it also knew how many serves had to be made in order for that score to be picked up. Um, so it has an idea of statistics of objects and things moving actually in the, the video. It also knew which of the players was moving back and forth or moving together, which ones were uncertain or which ones weren't uncertain. It also had suggestions for how people could improve their game by watching the video. So here we got a situation where a video was created, there was no narration on it, but the AI tool was able to watch the video and while it was playing, be able to interact with it specifically answering my questions as the person trying to learn. So a lot of times people go, well, maybe it doesn't know, um, you know about what I do or how I do it. The fact that you are actually capturing a video of you doing your work, the AI tool has enough ability now to understand what you're doing in the context of what you're doing. Um, you know, are there some things that I'm sure that it won't recognize? Yeah, is it always gonna get better? Yeah, it is. It can't help but get better as it has more experience. So this is just a really cool example of how this is all coming together and what the pieces are that we're gonna have to play around with. What, you know, if I'm looking at this from someone who's creating online courses or course material, and I'm thinking, where does this fit in? How does it apply to me? Well, if I'm just worried about creating a course where I have a big written script and I use AI to do my research and I have it create a script for me and I get my cameras ready to do all of this stuff and then I have to break it into individual lessons and all of those pieces. If I'm looking at this and I say, how can I create a video and let the AI tool be able to create the lesson content for me based on its understanding of what I'm doing and have me complement it. I think this is where the real value is and this stuff is happening quickly. Um, when I first tried this, uh, I think uh, two weeks ago, it was a little bit clunky. It's improved in the last two weeks. Uh, I didn't have any trouble waiting for things. Other times it was like slowing down or I'd lose the connection. But in this situation, just quickly, I had it watching eight, 10 minutes of video uh, and it was watching with me while it was playing. And this is the exact same thing that's gonna happen when we're actually got live video that's going through your phone as you're walking around anywhere, as you're watching a sport live on TV, if you go to an event, if you're watching someone play, if you're watching people interact, you now have the ability to have an agent with fresh eyes that can explain in detail what's going on with the person, but the world around it and everything that's happening. So please go and investigate the Google AI Studio and think in the back of your mind, what are the other pieces that I'm missing here if I'm gonna build an education business? And I just before we go, I wanna to touch on those quickly because I think it's as interesting as, we're watching a video and we're having an interaction with the video, but learning just isn't about interacting with the video, there's all sorts of additional course materials or learning materials that you may want. If Gemini looks at this video and watches the video, it can certainly go and create quizzes based on it. So I can ask it and say, based on this video, for beginners, what are the top three teaching points? For advanced, what are the top three? Can you create a checklist? Can you create a list of exercises or practice uh, techniques or things that the person can do improve their game based on how they were playing. So this opens up a whole other world of really cool things 
if you want to get into the education business and move from being just a course creator. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have questions, make sure to visit trainingsites.io uh, forward slash join into the community there. I'm doing these videos every day. This is the third video that I've done today because this stuff is so cool and so exciting and there's so much opportunity for anyone who really wants to build an education business. This is James from Duke speaking. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back shortly with another great building and a great video to help you start and build and grow your education business. Take care, expect the best.